Hello everybody, this is uh, Matt Ritchie here, and I thought that today I would share with you some of the details on a project that I have been working on uh, with the, the assistance of a lot of other people since last December, and that is the Foundry Virtual Tabletop Torg Eternity System. And today, my objective really isn't to do a tutorial on it, uh, although you may pick up a couple of things along the way, but my objective really isn't to do a tutorial so much as it is just for those who are curious to give you a feel for what all is included uh, with the base game, what all is available right now for it in terms of content. Uh, just so that you can make a decision about whether maybe this is something that you might want to try out. And uh, so to begin with, what we're looking at here is the uh, the Foundry Virtual Tabletop interface. Uh, and I've loaded the, the Day90 uh, world map on here just to kind of uh, have a map that we can be looking at while we're talking through all of this. Uh, now, Foundry uh, up in the upper right-hand corner has a control bar with a series of tabs. Uh, it begins with a, a chat bar. You can pop out that chat bar if you want to by right-clicking on it, and then you just you can kind of have your your chat log uh, sitting alongside everything else instead of uh, having to go back and click on it every once in a while. Uh, there's a combat uh, bar, which we'll come back to in a minute. Uh, there is a scenes uh, tab, there's a tab for actors, tab for various game related items, a tab for your journal entries, it will also include your decks and cards, um, a tab for uh, rollable tables, a tab for your music, and uh, then finally a tab that contains all of your compendiums. So to begin with, let's have a look at uh, what the and character, this is what the sheet, character like sheet is going to look like in Foundry. You've got your uh, axioms up here. You can change the race right here. You can change uh, the cosm, and you'll notice as you change the cosm, the axioms are going to update on that. You can keep track of your wounds, your shock, and uh, we'll go ahead and give the Realm Runner four possibilities here because he's got the Prodigy ability. And then uh, below that we've got our attributes, derived attributes, and skills which are all ready to be rolled. To roll an attribute all you're going to do is um, you're going to click on the name of the attribute. In this case I'll click on dexterity and you'll see that uh, 14 gets rolled and we get a, dis a display over here on the chat log that gives us some information about the test. It starts out by told, telling us what the action total is on the test, uh, which is the most important piece of information. But then we see what the attribute and the bonus number are on it as well. Now I should note that if we give uh, our Realm Runner a wound, so we're going to give him one wound right here, and we go back and we re-roll that dexterity test, we're going to see some additional information pop up. We're going to see modifiers, and we're going to see that it's uh, taken one off because he has a wound. The system automatically took that off. Now, obviously, the system doesn't account for all possible modifiers. There's just too many, and there's some that are just created on the fly on an adventure-by-adventure -adventure basis. But we do track some of the more significant ones, vulnerable statuses, stymied statuses, wounds, those kinds of things. Uh, to roll a skill, all you do is you click on the name of the skill. Let's try a reality test here. And uh-oh, you'll, you'll notice we're using, we actually have the uh, iconic Torg Eternity dice that are available as a part of the system. In this case, we had a mishap that was rolled. We get alerted right here at the very top on the reality test that we have a mishap and a possible disconnect depending on what the character is up to at this point. We can see down here that we rolled a one. Um, let's 
look over now at the defenses box. We can see all of the defenses for the character spelled out in the box there. And if we want to roll for an active defense, all we got to do is click on the defenses button. It rolls for us, and we can see that we're going to get a plus two on our active defense in this round as a result of that roll of 15. Um, the character sheet has a summary of your perks here, although you'll manage your perks somewhere else. And then um, it has all of the attacks that are available to your character down at the very bottom of the first page. To roll an attack, let's suppose I want to use the Glock as an example. We're going to click on that D20 near the Glock, and that is going to make the test for us. In this case, we got a 9 action total with 13 damage. Let's uh, suppose we want to spend a possibility on this test. All we're going to do is we're going to click on the possibility button down at the bottom of the test, and then we're going to get an updated result here right now showing our die total of 24. Same thing if we uh, are have an up condition this round. We can click on the up button, and we get the results of an up roll right there. Hero drama cards are the same. If we spend a plus three card on it, uh, we can add that to the action total on the test. And then once we're ready to deal damage, we can see we have 13 damage right now to roll a BD. We're just going to click on the BD down at the bottom of the screen, and it's going to add that additional bonus die for us right there. Again, rolling with those iconic Torg Eternity dice. We're really happy we've been able to include that in it. Um, you have several other tabs that are associated with your sheet. You've got a tab here that allows you to keep track of your perks. You've got a tab where all of your weapons are included, as well as your armor, your gear, implants, eternity shards, vehicles, etc. If you have any spells, miracles, or psionic powers, they'll show up in the powers tab. And then finally, uh, there's a, an effects screen that will allow you to turn on and off certain effects that are active on your character. In this case, the only one that the Realm Runner has is this armor plus one that comes from the leather armor. And uh, we can see how that is adding one to his armor here and one to his toughness. If we go back into that screen and we click the X to make the armor inactive, let's suppose, for example, uh, it's taken off or removed for a moment, then we'll see over here uh, the armor is gone to zero, the toughness has gone down to eight. And so that effect is not in effect until we toggle it back on as a passive effect there. And then, of course, uh, the final tab is a place to put a description of the character uh, and its background and so forth. So those are the basics of how the characters work. Threats, as in the game, look a little bit different. Uh, but we'll go ahead and go in and have a look at some of the threats one of the threat screens here, just so that you can see. In this instance, let's just do a uh, let's do a cyber priest, just as an example. So we're going to open up the cyber priest here, and we can see there's an edit tab up here, and then all of his stats are down at the bottom. If we want to hide that, we can, where we just see the basic stat block for the cyber priest. And to roll for him, we just click on the attribute or click on the skill or click on uh, any weapon that he has. In this case, the, he does, the Cyber Priest doesn't really have a weapon, but we can go over and we can roll the Hellfire Miracle for him and see that we got a 13 damage off a 19 action total with the Hellfire Miracle. If we want to know more about that miracle, we can click on the Send to Chat button and that'll give us some basic information about uh, what's what's going on with that particular miracle. Um, you can drag the actors over onto the sheet and then they're going to appear and you can move them around the tabletop, of course. Right click on them, you can change their shock, their wounds, and you can add conditions to them. So for example, on the Realm Runner here, if I right click on him, I can click on the conditions there and I can add a stymied condition. And that token is gonna to show up on him in connection with that. I can add a, uh, uh, oh, let's do the, um, 
disconnected condition, just to show and remind everybody that the Realm Runner is disconnected at the moment. Uh, the system will take into effect the fact that his token is stymied if we roll off of this. Let's just try that real quick. Uh, we're going to open up the actor sheet off of that token. We're going to run the evidence analysis test. And if you look, you'll see in addition to the wound, the minus one penalty for the wound, we're also taking the minus two penalty for the stymied in. So even though he has a skill value of nine, he, he loses one of those for a bonus and loses three more as a result of the modifier, and it's showing his action total is, uh, is only five. Several different modules that are available for it. Uh, the most important one, however, is the core rules module. Uh, which is included in the compendium. When you get the core rules module, you're going to get uh, several different compendiums. And it basically, you're, what you're getting with it is all of the information that comes from the, uh, the original game. This is not available for free as a part of the product that you can download uh, from the Foundry menu, but it can be purchased from Ulysses Spiel. I think the, the price is $20. Uh, you are going to get a compendium in that that includes all of the threats that were a part of the original core rulebook. These are threats that you're probably going to use over and over in games, like your church police street beater, your Adinos warrior, those sorts of things. You're also going to get with it a core book items compendium. This contains every heavy weapon, every weapon, every item of gear, every perk, uh, basically every bit of crunch that you're going to find in the Torg Eternity system uh, in the core rulebook is going to be available in this particular compendium. Uh, the, all of, you know, Here's the diminished spell, here's a disguise kit, we're just going through the Ds right now. And you can find all of these. Gloater, which is I think a special ability, flight, a special ability that gets attached to some NPCs. So you'll have access to all of those. It's really easy if you want to add one to a character sheet. Let's suppose that this character's picked up the Indomitable perk for some reason. You just drag it out of the compendium or off of the, the toolbar. You drop it, and now the perk is available with all of the details that relate to that particular perk uh, ready to examine or display in the chat. Foundry makes it so easy to build and maintain characters uh, once you kind of understand how the basic system works and if you've got access to a good compendium like the, the core rulebook compendium. Um, the core rulebook uh, uh, module is also going to give you all of the basic rules to the game. If you look at the core rules homepage, you'll see it's kind of like a table of contents that's supercharged. It's going to give you uh, you know, the first section linked to all the rules to the game, sex, sec, section a link to all of the information that you're going to need to create and maintain your Storm Knight, third section, a uh, description of the possibility wars, and then fourth section, some particular information that GMs are going to want to appreciate. And it's all kind of organized under headings where you can just quickly pull up Anything you need to know, if you need to know what an interaction attack is and how it works, you're going to know that's under the rules, under combat. You're going to click on interaction attacks, and then that's going to open up all of the rules that you need to, to read about interaction attacks. You can click up here on show players. That's going to reveal the rule to all of your players in your game so that they'll all be able to see that if, uh, if they need to. So we're really pleased with kind of how the, the home page worked out and how quickly you can access the rules from that. Um, you're also going to get the Torg Eternity soundtrack, and uh, that's going to come in the form of this playlist right here. All you got to do, drag the playlist over to the uh, music tab, and then you can start playing the soundtrack uh, just like that. And all 21 tracks from the Torg Eternity soundtrack are included in it, ready to play. Um, and then we also include a couple of scenes, the Day 9, Day uh, 1, and Day 90 maps 
from uh, the, the core release of the game. If you want uh, access to the GM screen, once you bought the Core Rules Compendium, there's going to be a button that you can hit on the upper left-hand corner of your, um, your screen that says Toggle GM Screen. You hit that, and that is going to pull up the GM screen for you to look at. You can even zoom in and out on different panels in the, in the GM screen. And then when you're ready for it to go away, you just hit the button again, and it'll disappear down at the bottom like that. So that's a quick tour of the, uh, the, the uh, core rules module. There is one other module that's out right now that we're really happy about, which is uh, the Hostile Takeover Adventure module. Uh, this is a one-shot adventure that comes out of that first Delphi Missions book, uh, Hostile Takeover, written by Daryl Hayhurst. And we uh, have assembled that for, as a free module if you've got the base game, you can download that as a free module and play it. You can play Torg Eternity, basically, uh, within an hour or two, if you want to, uh, from your acquisition of, of the Foundry product. And uh, one of the things that I'm really happy about with uh, Foundry in particular are some of the lighting effects that they can do. And I'm just going to use this uh, map from the Hostile Takeover module as an example here so that you can see... Uh, we've got a, a kind of a holographic uh, effect here for a hologram that's supposed to be in the middle of this living room that's located in the cyber papacy. And uh, this is just an example of how the lighting effects for Foundry VTT can be used for things that can really make your, uh, your maps pop out as you're playing on them. And th this particular module uh, comes with uh, this uh, second floor as well, and then all of the NPCs, as well as the text that you're going to need to to run uh, this particular game. Before we're done, let's talk about the uh, card system and how that works. So the thing you need to know about the card system is that right now Foundry does not have a built-in uh, card support system, but there is a module that you can purchase called Card Support that will enable to, you to use the Foundry cards with the system. And what's going to happen is the, all, of, all of the cards from the core release come with the base game. So if you have Foundry and you get the, the base system and they'll install automatically as soon as you load up a world that has the system in it. And so let's just take the Destiny deck as an example here so that you can see it. I'll drag that over onto the desktop. And um, you can, uh, from the desktop, you're going to be able to look at the discard pile. You're going to be able to draw, reset the deck. That means basically just move it back to its original state where it contains all the cards and there's no discards and there's nothing in anybody's hands. Uh, you're going to be able to shuffle it. And then your players, when they want to draw off of the deck, are going to be able to kind of select the deck they want to draw from, which in this case, let's draw from the Destiny deck. We'll draw our hand to four cards, and you'll see those four cards have appeared here. Um, I can then reveal that card so that all the other players can see the card if I need to. I can mark the card, indicating that I've got it in my pool for this particular round and I can even give the card, flip the card over if I want to uh, and I can even give the card to another player. I would select the player here and, and uh, click give on that. Uh, players are able to drag their cards and over to and drop them on the desktop just like I did right there but they aren't able to pick it back up at that point. If they need it back the GM is going to have to pick it up and give it to them once it's on the desktop. But usually, player puts something on the desktop because they're going to play it, and so all you've got to do is just uh, discard the card, and it's back out of play. So that gives you a quick idea about how card play works in the game. One other thing we'll just show really quickly is the combat tracker, because I, I really like that. The, um, the And we'll put a couple of actors out here. We'll put the Realm Runner out here, and we'll put the Cyber Priest out here. And uh, the Realm Runner, of course, is going to have a friendly token disposition. The Cyber Priest will be hostile. 
And if I select these two, right click on them, and then click on toggle combat state, you'll notice they both get dropped into the combat tracker with the villain as red and the hero as blue. If there were more villains, they'd all be on the top and the hero would be on the bottom as blue. Uh, and then we have uh, the ability to, to dictate who's going to go first in the round. So we have the villains scheduled as first here, but if I click on the blue uh, button, that's going to rearrange things and it's going to set the blue as first and then I can set it back to red as going first if I need to there. Then as a GM, I, once a player or NPC is gone, I can check them off on the list and know that they've already taken their turn this particular round. One of the features that we have in mind in the future is going to be that in each combat round, we're actually going to be able to display the, um, we're going to be able to display the, uh, the current drama card within the combat tracker. So you'll actually be able to see the drama card in addition to all of the players and when and where they've gone. I think that's going to be a really uh, useful feature once we've got that integrated into the system. So those are the basics of the Torg Eternity system. Um, I will set links down in the description that will include the uh, place where you can go to pick up the Foundry system. And, uh, and from there, once you've got the Foundry system loaded up, you'll be able to access the Torg Eternity system from within uh, the menus that are available in Foundry. Um, and then finally, uh, just a quick plug for some of the things that I'm doing right now. Um, I have uh, several different products that are available on the Infiniverse Exchange. I hope you'll go check them out. It's a great way to, uh, to support me and the work that I'm doing on the system, uh, as well as to get some what I think are some pretty good products for uh, Torg Eternity as well. Uh, I have two adventures, uh, the Riverside Heist, and uh, the Silent City, both of which are available uh, right now. I also have a novella called Children of the Storm. Worked very hard on that for several months, uh, trying to just get the tone right and the plot right uh, for uh, just a classic uh, kind of swashbuckling uh, Torg Eternity adventure that takes place in Isle. Uh, and I, I hope you go pick that up and check it out. I, I have so many fond memories of some of the fiction that was created for the original game. And I've really tried hard to recreate the tone and uh, the excitement that came out of those original games and to kind of capture the essence of Torg in that book. And um, very proud of it. Ho hope uh, you'll, you'll go check that out and even give it a review. And then also, uh, in a non-Torg related item, I am the author of a, uh, serialized set of stories that is available on Kindle using Kindle Vela. It is called Tales of the Nova Rangers. It is a classic utopian space opera. Uh, I've tried to modernize it as well. I've tried to, to begin with this idea of let's take this utopian space opera like let's say Buck Rogers uh, or Flash Gordon or something like that and let's see if we can make that work in a way that suits those sensibilities uh, of modern readers uh, that that uh, maybe has a little bit different uh, writing style and prose style, but still captures the essence of those characters. And I, the first, I think, nine episodes are available right now. There'll be a total of 12 they release every week. Uh, the first three of them are free, and I will also leave a link in the description for those of you who want to go check out Tales of the Nova Rangers. Uh, but for now, uh, thanks so much for watching, and um, I look forward to hearing in your comments uh, what you think about the Torg Eternity system in Foundry.